Hey everyone, back here live in Austin for Linux Foundation Open Source Summit. You know, we haven't really spoken about it, but there's a large expo floor up on floor four. We're on floor two. Some great companies uh, exhibiting up there, talking to people, joining in the conversation. I want to introduce you to a company we haven't covered before on TechStrong, on any of our brands, and that is Layer 5, and I'm here with Lee Calicote from Layer 5. We get that right? Oh, that's that's correct. Layer five, Lee Calco. You're speaking of great companies. Okay. Let's talk about layer five. <laughs> All right, man. Let's jump in. Well, before we go, what's your position with layer five? Yeah, uh, founder and CEO. So uh, excellent. You're the right person to talk to then. Yeah, hey, I, I think so. Uh, All right. So tell, talk to me. What what's layer five about? Yeah. Well, well, we've been uh, been around for a couple of years now. Been focused on. Um, open source community first. Some of, uh, uh, we built a couple of open source projects from scratch. They're cloud native um, centric. They're actually um, service mesh um, centric in nature. Mm -hmm. um, there's about three of them. Two of them have recently landed into the CNCF. Actually, uh, now that I think of it, there's an annual review of one of them coming up. Uh, to step back for a moment and say like layer five uh, sort of mission and, and vision in, in general is well, is a recognition that like the infrastructure is quite capable these days, and we aim to um, enable service teams to expect more from their infrastructure, uh, to help them extract more value than maybe they recognize that's there. Okay. Uh, we really think that we, we've had a, an initial focus and start toward service mesh as an intelligent layer that you can program and tell it to do various things. We think that um, there's a lot of untapped power in the in the network, and that's really important to microservices and lots of requests transiting the network. Uh, and so we're here to well, help people wield that power uh, in a self-service way. Excellent. So look, when we look at um, service mesh, right? So I've been going to KubeCons and everything, well, before COVID and all, and you know, before COVID, it really seemed like service mesh was where the action was, right? People were using Kubernetes, but now as we layered on security and network and all these services, we needed a way for them to communicate, talk to each other, interact, and, and that service mesh became the sort of the API hub, if you will, for lack of a better word, yeah. um, where all that action was taking place. And then we saw several different kind of service mesh, right, uh, Istio, which only recently became part of CNCF, right? It was Google. Um, was it Linkerd is another yeah. one, right? Yeah. And you mentioned a couple that your company have. Yeah, th there's, um, well, actually, it's, it's kind of interesting. Just within the CNCF as, uh, actually, one of the roles that I play is the uh, chair for the technical advisory group for network for the CNCF. And so with Istio's um, recent donation, um, or it being donated as a recent project, rather, mm -hmm. is, well, if I get the count right, I think that that's, uh, depends on how you count, but it's either five or six service meshes just in the CNCF. Right. And that excludes service mesh implementations that are outside of the CNCF. And so, yeah. It's a crowd. Now, one may look at that and say, well, obviously that is just, or not justification, but proof that the service mesh area is a really big area that's very... Uh, important to people and, and you know, it, it's going to need a good solution. The flip side is the fact that there's so many of them means none of them are doing great right now. They're all kind of works in progress and we'll have to see what what comes out of this. Yeah, how, they're, well, how the adoption... How the adoption, how they mature, right? It's, it's still relatively immature. Networking is a deep, deep kind of a deep and wide area that, um, you know... Yeah, um, I don't know. That, that I guess I, I'll commonly say that if you were to like reflect on this this position that service meshes are in, with the, the number of them that there are, if you were to look at uh, something relevant like um, container orchestrators, and so K Kubernetes having um, is enjoying the most popularity by by, by far. Mm -hmm. um, previously, with a litany of others that I won't I won't prattle off. But There's a whole bunch of them, right? That. You know, the yeah. road to perdition is littered with the best of intentions, yeah. <laughs> right? And from Docker on, on down. And I think we'll eventually, eventually we might see something similar happen with service match. Yeah. And it, uh, it's, 
I, well, I, I guess I would put it this. Yeah, I, I think that that's totally true. That you mm -hmm. could, we could step ourselves outside of the tech industry and just look at soft drinks, or, mm -hmm. you know, f and use some other relevant examples. Right. To there are winners and losers in every one, but but here's the other thing. I think, you know, taking a uniquely open source view of this whole thing is when you have. So you're going to have some open source solution, or maybe there'll be two or three solutions that are really popular, and they'll be the de facto winners, standards that people use. But then you'll have commercial companies that are harnessing those, leveraging those, but, but that's the way of open source, right? So we all start here, and then commercial companies build on top of it. And is that sort of where Layer 5 wants to be? Yeah, that's about, yeah. It captures it pretty well. Um, that, uh well, we, we were kind of saying these things are kind of deep and, and complex. They're more capable than some people choose to, to use or, or really comprehend. It can be a, big, a scary old thing to uh, be running, well, Kubernetes, any of this infrastructure at, at scale or, or, or even not at scale. To, I, I know that if I were in the operator's seat, gosh, I might have to just change my shorts if I, as I go to like, make a change in, in product, Absolutely. This traffic's supposed to go there. And, and it's crazy what goes, and the amount, I mean, the kinds of traffic that we see now in, in, is, is just crazy. So you mentioned another role that you have, though, besides being CEO of Layer 5, and that is chairman of the, of the TAC, of the Technical yeah. Advisory Committee for Network for CNCF. So that includes the service mesh is a big part of it. What else is a part of that? Yeah, there are other kind of, uh, well, the term network gets expanded uh, from there, but kind of, uh, well, things like um, Core DNS, um, gRPC, uh, <laughs> boy, it's going to stretch my, uh, the uh, geez, uh, other network centric projects that I'm drawing a blank on at the moment. Uh, well, look, don't, don't knock yourself down. Yeah. Let's talk DNS. It, it was just so funny. I actually had a, I call him a young guy. They're all young to me. <laughs> but a, a young researcher here who is the Dan Kaminsky Fellowship winner. Uh, and, of course, Dan is the guy who discovered the huge DNS oh. vulnerability that kind of broke the Internet, right? Um, and as a result of that, we DNS as a as a thing became real, right? People started, hey, we better make sure our DNS is, is it's a tight, right? Locked down, secure, <laughs> scalable. What, what, what's going on in the world of CNCF around DNS? Yeah, there's, um, well, Co Core DNS as a project specifically has become, uh, in the er earlier days of uh, Kubernetes, um, there was a different DNS implementation. Um, Core DNS is, um, been a, sort of a, a cloud native uh, implementation from from scratch and become the de facto uh, DNS offering within your Go. at least your vanilla distributions of, of right. Kubernetes. Um, there's been it's to your point it, like it's DNS is a is a wonderful uh, like makes for a wonderful attack vector for um, getting into organizations being able to slip in the middle kind of re redirect some of that traffic with, without people knowing uh, and. You know, it's one of the older, like like TCP, or like a lot of what the internet is comprised of. It, DNS is one of your older... We inherited. <laughs> and uh, well, like a lot of the infrastructure that we keep around, it, it needs, to, needs to continue to evolve to, with a real security-centric uh, perspective. Absolutely. Um, we end up within the CNCF tag network. There are a couple of working groups um, uh, within it. The one that's the most active is the service mesh working group. So back to your point about the buzziness of that, yep. that, that topic. Um, and tends to be the one that I, I focused um, the most on. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's the one getting the most oxygen, that's for sure. You know what we didn't tell people? Layer 5, where can they go on the web to find yeah. out? Layer5.io. Um, well, L-A-Y-E-R, number 5. Number 5. .io.